Hello guys and welcome back to chemistry class and of course today we are going to be looking at the topic neutralization. So this is a continuance of our study on acid bases and salts. All right. So today I'm going to see neutralization. And do not forget that this video tutorial, of course, is brought to you by the O3 School Jam CBT app. Right? It's available for both Android phones, for iPhones, and for laptops. All right, and for computers in your homes. All right. So uh, it it has a study mode, it has a practice mode, it has an exam mode, it has a what a mock mode. It has what all the past questions that you need for your for study for your exam. All right, and of course, there's a wonderful feature called the UTME challenge. That challenge, of course, is conducted for student participating in Jam for this year. All right, so it's a weekly challenge. You participate to win prizes, and that the prizes is not the most important thing. People usually get it twisted. Right, the most important thing is that you see your score every week after participating in what in that what in that challenge. Once you participate in that challenge, you will see your score. So you are, you are, you are to what, for example, you score seventy in chemistry. In chemistry, you score uh, in maths, for example, you score 30, right? In uh, physics, you score 80. English, you score 41, right? If you have this kind of score, you know that ah, your chemistry is a little bit good. Your maths is very poor, it's very poor. Then your physics is what? It's, it's still good, it's good. English is not too good. So, what you need to do is to what is to focus a lot your or, or, or a lot of your strengths on what on mathematics and what on English. And luckily for you, all videos for mathematics for for jam syllabus is on this channel. So you can just watch video, solve questions, and understand concept better. Same as English. So please do not forget to what to what to jump on what on this train. And of course, uh the UTM challenge helps you what to what to work on your on your weaknesses and to know and to know what your strengths. All right, so that is that for that about the app. Activation is just three thousand error as opposed to two thousand five hundred error the previous year. So <laughs> pass your jam once, get your app, download it, activate it, and you see yourself running. Now let's head to neutralization. Neutralization is the irreversible reaction between an acid and an alkali to form salt and water only is the irreversible reaction between an acid and an alkali to form salt and water only all right so this is neutralization Right, it is the irreversible reaction between an acid and a base to form salt and water only. That is a simple definition for neutralization. All right, please do not forget to like this video. Liking this video will make all that students easily find this video. Do not forget to also watch, subscribe to this channel. Subscription to this channel is free. F R O E E. Right, just click on that red subscribe button just below this video, and do not forget to share to others so that they will also work learn. All right, so as to continue in this regard. Neutralization is the irreversible reaction between an acid and an alkali to form salt and water only. Now, according to Svante Arrhenius, right? Svante Arrhenius, he said that what acids have in common is the hydrogen ion, while what hydroxides or uh, 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 bases have in common is what is the hydrogen ion. Thus, combining what an acid and an alkaline in solution that is neutralization now will mean combining all these two all together. So that means the general equation for what neutralization, general equation for neutralization is H positive plus what? OH minus to give us what? H2O. All right. So that is very, very clear there. So neutralization is the irreversible reaction between an acid and an alkaline to form salt and water only. And according to Zvante Aenos, he said what acids have in common is this. Why what hydrosides have in common is this, right? Thus, combining an acid and an alkali will mean what? Combining what? These two what together. So, hydrogen ion plus OH ion will give us what? H2O. This is the general equation. General equation for neutralization. General equation for neutralization. All right? So, now... Having known this, indicators used to identify the points, the points of this water neutralization will depend on the type of acid and alkali being what reacted together. 
indicators that are used to identify the point where this neutralization occurs, right, will depend on the type of what acid and alkali being reacted together. So it means it's either what we have what a strong acid, acid and a strong base reacting together, or we're having a strong acid and a weak base reacting together or a weak acid and a weak base reacting together or a uh, weak acid and a strong base reacting all together so the indicator now right that used to identify the point where the neutralization will occur would depend, depend on the word type of acid and alkali being reacted all together if it's a what strong it could be a, a strong acid reacting with a strong base, a strong acid reacting with a weak base, or a weak acid reacting with what with a weak base, or a weak acid reacting with a strong base, right? So I'm going to give you a table now. I'm going to show you a table now where I'm going to show you some indicators. After the indicators, I will show you the pH range where the best function and the what pH range where they change what color. All right. So let's quickly just look at that table immediately. Right, so I'm going to first of all have what uh, the indicators, the indicators. Then we'll have the pH range where the best what function and the pH range for color change. So here we're going to have indicator, right? Then I'm going to have here pH range greater than uh, sorry less than seven in an acid in an acidic medium, as in an acid, right? Then here I'm going to have pH range greater than seven this one in a base right then here i want to have ph range equals to seven this one is a neutral neutral solution neutral then uh, i'm going to have ph range for color change all right so now i'm going to see what the indicators the ph range in an acid in a base ph range when it's neutral and the ph range for what for color change for color change for what each indicator now sorry uh for each indicator yes so i want to have the first indicator here is methyl methyl orange so for methyl orange in an acidic medium it is what it is red know that in a base it is yellow then if it's in a neutral solution right it gives what orange color then of course the ph range for color change for methyl orange is from 3.1 to 4.6 all right so this is the indicator in methyl orange in in an acidic medium it is red in a uh, basic medium it is yellow neutralized salt is orange and the ph range for color change for what methyl orange is from 3.1 to 4.6 right so if you carry out a titration and the ph range falls between this other words the most suitable uh, indicator you may use we are going to use is what is metal what orange now let's see another one phenoptaline phenoptaline now for phenoptaline the ph range in an acid is colorless in an acid it is what in an acidic medium it is what completely colorless but in a base it is red why it is what uh a pale pink in neutral solution pale pink right so for for for, for penaltaline, it's colorless in what in an acidic medium it is what it shows it gives us red color in the basic medium then in the neutral medium it gives us pale pink why what the ph range of course for color for penaltaline is from 8.3 to 10.0 all right so if you carry out your titration in the laboratory and they have a ph range from 8.3 to 10.0 know that the most suitable in, uh, indicator i going to use is what is phenolphthalein let's just see, look at litmus paper also litmus paper now for a litmus paper of course you know that litmus paper and acid changes blue litmus paper to red all right acid changes blue litmus paper red why uh, base change red litmus paper blue? That means pH uh, in an acidic what uh, medium is going to be what now? It's going to be red. It will change blue red. Then this one pH range in the base will change uh, red to blue. All right. Then in a neutral solution it could be what 
blue or red then the ph range for color change is 5.0 to 8.0 all right so that is for litmus paper in an acidic medium it will change blue to red to be red in a basic medium it will change red to blue to be blue then in a neutral water solution to be what either blue or red then of course the ph range for color change is 8.0 now i told you that the type of indicators that we're going to use to identify the point of neutralization will depend on the type of what acid and alkali being reacted together i mentioned that before so if you are using what a strong acid and a strong base what kind of indicator will you use if you are using you are using a strong acid and a weak base what type of indicator will you use if you are using uh, you, you are reacting a weak base and a weak acid what type of indicator will you use if you are reacting a weak a weak acid and a strong base what type of indicator will you use right so now let's quickly look at that now if i reacting what if i having a strong acid versus a strong base any indicator can work any indicator all right so if you are using what strong acid with a strong base if you are reacting a strong acid with a strong base you can use what any indicator now if you are reacting a strong acid on the other hand strong acid versus a weak base once the acid is strong once the acid is strong you are using methyl orange all right once the acid is strong you are using what methyl orange simple as that now if i reacting a weak acid with a weak base there is no suitable there is no suitable what indicator for weak acid and what weak base if you are reacting a weak acid and a weak base there is no what suitable indicator for that now if you are reacting a weak acid on the other hand versus a strong base all right by reacting a weak acid with a strong base on the other hand you are going to use what phenoptanin i are going to use what phenoptanin, phenoptanin as the indicator all right now remember this too so if i if i also there's a last one if you are reacting a strong acid versus a triosocarbonate right the indicator to use in reacting a strong acid and a triosocarbonate is methyl methyl orange now in summary what i'm saying here is that once you have what a strong acid eh, a strong acid use methyl orange now why this one for strong acid and strong base you can use any indicator that means phenolic can work here metal orange can work here all right but of course if i reacting stronger once you see strong acid inside the best option to go for is what is metal or metal orange you can see strong acid metal orange the strong acid a strong base any indicator that means metal orange can be there because metal orange will be phenoptanin right if I, if reacting a strong acid and a weak base because it's a strong acid you must use metal orange if you're reacting weak acid that is weak acid weak base that's why i'm not seeing metal orange there right now weak acid strong base once you see strong base use phenoptanin so phenoptanin for strong base uh, uh metal orange for what for strong acid i see strong acid again here yeah, that's why i see metal orange appearing here again so in summary for strong acid for strong acid use methyl orange for strong base use phenoptanin you get so every other thing can be able to walk through it so that i think that is what that is a reminder a perfect reminder for you strong acid metal orange strong base phenoptanin it's as simple as abc now what is a standard solution a standard solution is a solution uh, in which what the concentration is what is known. A known concentration equals what a standard what solution, right? A standard solution is a solution whose concentration what is what is known, whose concentration is known. So that's just uh, a tidbit we need to what know about this also. A standard solution is a solution in which what the concentration is known. A standard. So let me put that down. A standard solution is a solution with a known concentration. 
once you know the concentration of a particular word solution, then you can say that that solution is what is a standard solution. But if the concentration is unknown, you say that that, that word solution is what non word standard is a non standard solution. A solution with no known concentration is a non standard solution. So, many of you don't want to write maybe your wire, you see, once you want to do your titration, say a standard solution of this and this with the concentration. So, once it's a standard solution, they will give you the concentration. But if it's not the standard uh, uh, solution, you will not be given what uh, the what uh, the concentration because the concentration is what is not known. All right. So, that is different between what a standard solution and a no uh, and a non standard solution. Now, another thing you need to know about, of course, is uh alkalize alkalize and basis right know that what alkalize alkalize are soluble bases alkalize are soluble what basis right that means what they what they give what the hydroxide what ion uh, when they dissolve what in water alkalize are soluble what basis why all uh bases that are not soluble are not what alkalize Alkalize are soluble bases, but if the base is not soluble, then it is not what an alkali. All right, so that means a base is a name, it's an umbrella covering both alkali and bases, right? So all alkalis are bases, but not all bases are what are alkali. So take note of what of that. Alkalis are what are soluble bases. Now that we have what be able to satisfactorily talk about talk about neutralization, you know what neutralization is, you know about indicators, and you know a lot about what the standard solution. And what an alkali is, then of course we'll bring this video to a close. Do not forget to like the video, do not forget to share, and don't forget to what to subscribe to what to this what YouTube channel. And as you continue doing that, I will see you in the next episode.